Hello, everybody. A warm welcome to another interview on Wisdom from North. I'm Janneke, and today I'm excited to be here with Rihanna Aronsi. Rihanna is an internationally acclaimed spiritual teacher, a master healer, and she's a best-selling author of You Are the Creator. According to Rihanna, it is our deepest wounds and suffering and darkest moments that are the greatest catalysts for transformation, healing and enlightenment. And today we're going to dive deep into healing and deep into how we are the creators and how we can own that as a truth and thus transform our own lives and the planet. So let's meet Rihanna. How are you doing today? And a warm, warm welcome. Thank you, Yannicka. Thank you so much for having me. I'm wonderful. How are you doing? I'm very good. And I'm very grateful for having read your book. I'm reading it right now in the process of it. And it's really deep and it's raw and it's so real. And it comes from your own experience. That's that's evident. And, and also, I understand that uh, part of it has been channeled uh, through... Um, uh, ascended masters and we might come back to that as well and um, it's I mean your story is uh, full of suffering and difficult things that you've been going through however you write in in such an inspiring way because you're you're showing us how it's possible to having gone through the things you've been going going through and still come out on the other side being an empowered woman woman now you are a, a master of healing uh, a successful author and a spiritual teacher really helping and healing people's lives and that's really inspiring I find and uh, and really courageous to to also share your story. So I just want to, want to say that and commend you for that. Well, thank you so much. <clears throat> so tell us a little bit, what led you to write this book? Well, uh, there was a lot of synchronistic events that led up to the publishing of the book. Um, but my story, I was guided by spirit. I was told years before that I would be the, the author of multiple books. I didn't believe it because I wasn't one that enjoyed writing. I never ever thought I would be an author. I didn't like writing anything. But when I had awakened um, and I started doing the work that I'm doing now with, with I'm helping people, um, I realized that I needed to tell my story. Two reasons why I I know you're referring to the initial part where I, where, where I tell my story in the rawest most intense detail. And there's a reason that I did that is because I wanted people to know that it doesn't matter what you've gone through in your life. It doesn't matter how bad your circumstances are. It can be healed. You can come out of that. You can find your purpose, find your calling and thrive and find the truth of who you truly are. And the second reason why is because I wanted people to know, um, I know there were a lot of people that might be going through similar things that might be suffering silently. And I wanted them to know that they're not alone. And so I spoke up, I told my story, but I wanted to show how I got from there to where I am now and the process that it took me in order to be doing the work that I'm doing now, if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, powerful. Uh, so let's speak about the spiritual journey because that's what the book is really about. And you yes. go very deep uh, and I love that. Uh, you woke up in uh, in the 20s, uh, you wrote that you started to remember your true nature mm -hmm. and that you were a, a serpent angel? Yes, yes. That actually, that actually came um, after I published my book. Um, but during the, how can I say, when I, my awakening was in stages. I didn't fully awaken in one moment, in one go. So in my early 20s, I had small phases of awakening that led up to the massive awakening that I did have. And so I, I started working with energy. I started, you know, um, I already had gifts and abilities where I could um, channel. You know, I was a medium. I could channel people that had passed over. I had prophetic dreams. Um, and so I knew that that was the norm for me, but I still didn't know the truth of who we are. 
and what we are doing here and what this entire world is that we live in. And so um, it, up until my early 20s, when I had my full awakening, I remember I was in my room, I was standing, and it was as if I had just popped out of my body and I, I was hovering above and I could literally see myself narrating my life. I could see myself being the dictator of my life there. And in that moment, I realized that I was actually the creator of my reality, that every single thing that I had encountered, every single traumatic event, positive, negative, I had called unto myself, for myself, for the purpose of expansion. And I was shocked in that moment. But the first thing that I said to myself was, I knew it. I knew there was so much more to what I've been told, to what I've been conditioned to, to believe. And I was so happy. But then in that moment, I realized, um, well, now, Rihanna, you have to unbecome everything that you were taught to be. Now you have to unbecome all those beliefs, release every single thing that is not truth. And from then onwards, I isolated myself for three years. I committed myself to healing everything that was untruth. And um, during that time, I did a lot of meditation and I um, accessed higher states of consciousness. And I also accessed my Akashic records and I was shown that I am, my soul originates from the, from the angelic realm as a seraphim angel. And um, this had happened after I published my book. And so my path expanded so much more the more I surrendered to, to the flow of my life, to, you, to, to uh, the divine that's within me. And then I um, was approached by the seraphim angels um, one day and they commissioned me and they um, asked me to help them, to, uh, to a mentor with them, to bring in the Ascension Blueprint. It's called the Seraphim Order, which I just completed. Um, and this is what I use now in my sessions for those that are on the spiritual path to assist them in healing their pain bodies, to assist them in healing everything, and then embody all their lifetimes of mastery in this lifetime now. Because with what's happening on the planet now, this is possible. We are able to really heal all timelines in one go, in mass. Um, it's possible now because the portals, the, the veils have been lifted. We are now awakening to the truth of who we are. And so... Yeah, it's, that's, that's my journey in a nutshell. Um, it's been a lot, but um, I, the more you surrender, I realize, the more you, you open yourselves up to more possibilities and more potential that you never knew you, you could have. There's so many directions we can go here. <laughs> Let me go. Okay, first, can you explain what a seraphim angel is? Because that is, I'm not so familiar with that. Yes term I've heard of archangels is, is this yeah. something else okay so the seraphim angel they are not mainly known by humans because they don't um, um how can I say they don't uh they only make themselves known at a certain level um that we graduate to so for example um we on earth now are graduating now into the next uh, level into the golden age and now they're stepping forward to assist us in that advancement of our evolution. They did this thousands of years ago as well when, when, when um, the universe or the world ad advances to the next stage. And so I also didn't know initially a lot about seraphim angels. Um, I remember in the Bible, they said something about seraphim, but I had no idea about a seraphim angel. And what they revealed to me was, is that they are the highest order of angels the seraphim, they basically surround the throne or the light of source. So they are reside in that realm and they are, they are actually the creators of worlds, species and universes. They birth everything that we see in creation um, because um, they, are, they are almost like the embodiment of source. They are also um, dragons. They oh. are... <laughs> their physical appearance, if you were to see them, they do shape shift, but their physical appearance would be mostly of a white dragon with white scales. They are massively huge. You cannot see where they end or where they begin. And within every scale, 
they are choirs singing. It's like pearlescent, beautiful colors that you, you can never imagine. Uh, they are majestic, they are powerful, and their main message is that you are creator, just like they are. And that was so synchronistic for me because that was my message, you are the creator, which is the title of my book, ever since I started this journey. And so when they came through with the exact same message that they are, they are the literal creators of earth, of worlds, of universes, of species, they birthed that um, into form. And their message is that we are exactly the same that they are. We are creators too. Um, and we can speak miracles, we can command miracles, we can embody miracles if we choose to claim the truth of who we are as source in form. Uh, let us talk about uh, we are the creators. Um, because uh, in my mind, like my, my ego starts to ask, well, okay, so I can create my reality, but I can't change another person. Like I can't make another person do something, so I can only create my realities. So let's uh, let's give an example. Okay, let's say you are super in love with this uh, girl or this man, like, uh, and you want to create that, you want to manifest that, or you want to manifest this job, and you want to get that interview. Just to be practical about it, we, we can't really make that person either fall in love with us or give us that job. So. Like, how does that work when it comes to, yes, we are the creators, but we can only create our own reality, uh, and, but we cannot, uh, yeah, we cannot tell others what to do. We cannot create that because they make their own choices. So how does this work together in a sense? So the same way that source gives us free will, source does not tell us what to do, what to create, um, what to, you know, how to be, how to act. We cannot do the same for other people. Everyone has their own sovereign divine free will that they can choose from. However, if our desire is to find a relationship or a person that truly loves us for who we are, that can be created. And that can be created, because, uh, that can be created by embodying that first within us. Because we all know that um, the, the law of attraction exists. So we cannot attract that into our reality based on a frequency of of lack or frequency of, of unlovable, of our unworthiness. And so we can create that love. It might not be that specific man that you have your eye on, but it can definitely be the love that you desire because free will, even angels, even the seraphim has free will. However, they choose to, to submit their will to the divine, to the divine will of source. Um, and so, we are all sovereign beings. You unfortunately cannot control another being, but you can decide based on your vibration what you attract to you and what you repel from you. And so in that essence, we are creators because we can create what we want. It might not be a specific individual, but it can be that emotion, that relationship that we're looking for. You speak a lot about unbecoming and stripping away, like you said in your life. Like I, uh, I, I get impressed by that because uh, I feel that there's so many things I'm attached to. And I think as humans, we attach to certain things, uh, our identity, who we are, that it, it's hard to let go of certain things. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you managed to do that and what is needed in order to really you know, let go of everything you thought you were, because that to me sounds a bit scary. Uh, Cause yeah. who am I, if I'm not all these things in a sense. And I think that's the whole point of awakening. It is that, um, you know, a lot of people, it takes a lot of suffering for, for someone to really wake up. You find that people that have suffered severely are the ones that wake up more quicker than the rest. And the reason that the reason for this is that um, when we, I'll make an example, your life story, when you were, you know, you had your career had everything happening for you, and then suddenly you lost your voice, that attachment to that story, to that goal, to that dream, to that reality was stripped away from you. And that is the awakening process. It destroys everything that you think you are. And then you left standing and asking yourself the questions, who am I? Why am I here? And then the universe answers. 
that those things does not define you, that who you are is this immovable, unshakable presence that is so much powerful than you could ever imagine. And when you decide to stay in that limited um, place of, of, of attachment to the old, to limited constructs, you then um, limit yourself of the magnitude of who you truly are. And so when you open, your up, open yourself up to unbecome and shed everything, you'll find you cannot even imagine what's lying underneath there, the power, the love, the joy, the peace. There is nothing in your external reality that can give you the peace and the happiness that you so desire, except the full embodiment of your divine self as source in form. How did you find uh, this peace uh, inside? Like, how did you manage to heal? Was, was forgiveness a big part of that? Uh, because I know that you've been through abuse. Was it forgiveness that really shifted it? Or was it more that awakening of that you are so much more? I think it was the awakening that I was so much more because for most of my life, I had thought that I was nothing. I thought that I was the cursed. I thought that I was doomed to suffer multiple rapes continuously. That was the theme of my life from a very young age. Constantly, I literally thought, I literally questioned God at the time and I asked him, why did you put me here to suffer? I don't understand. I did nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. And so when I awakened to the truth that I was the creator, that subconscious, unconsciously and consciously, I attracted that into my reality for the purpose of my expansion. I also then realized that those perpetrators were also victims of victims. And they must have also had a horrible childhood if they ended up suffering or, or committing those those types of acts and i realized that they and i had a similar wound the wound of unworthiness and not enoughness and that attracted us to you know have that encounter and um what made me truly heal and unbecome is because I was sick and tired of not living my truth. I was sick and tired of not being free. I wanted so much to be free. I wanted to just be. I didn't want to be trapped in a job that I hate. I didn't want to conform to things that I didn't believe in. I wanted to just be authentically myself. And that was the motivation for me to commit for three years to healing myself. And I did that. I was so committed and I realized that that is, very, that is an important aspect on this journey. A lot of us find ourselves with one foot in and one foot out, expecting our lives to change. We're still fixed in the illus illusory world or the matrix, so to speak, and in the spiritual world. And we, we expect that our lives should unfold. But the, the, the trick or the tool that I would say, the, the point is, is that you must be committed to this journey. You must commit to healing because if you don't, you will constantly, your pain body, your traumas will constantly be looking you in the face. Your relationships, your relationships with your partners, your parents will constantly be a mirror of those unhealed wounds. So when you um, begin to heal every aspect of yourself and integrate all your shadows back into, whole, into wholeness again, everything in your external reality will shift in accordance with that new vibration. Hmm. And you speak about the pain body and actually Eckhart Tolle speak about the pain yeah. body as well. Uh, can you explain for those who are new to that what the pain body is and perhaps a way we can uh, start to heal the pain body? Yes. Um, so the pain body, there's a lot of definitions for the pain body, but it's, it's, it's basically your emotional body. But for me, when I refer to the pain body, I refer to it um, as the, your body of, of trauma, your body of limited subconscious beliefs, your body of, of unprocessed emotion, your body of anything that is not your, who you truly are. That for me forms your pain body and it can be perpetuated um, events or emotions that you've experienced from childhood. It can be um, the, the wound of unworthiness, the wound of unlovable, of lack of self-love, the wound of um, um, not, you know, not being the abundant you that you are. It can be 
anything that triggers you into a space of, of um, depression or unhappiness or you know, unworthiness, anything that is not in alignment with the truth of who you are, for me, forms the pain body. And the pain body will always call you back into alignment. I find that a lot of people on the spiritual journey is that they, they're trying to raise their frequency. They're trying to raise their vibration to, to, you know, to ac access a higher state of consciousness. But what happens for most of us is that we are in alignment now. Tomorrow morning we wake up. Our day is completely just off center. Everything goes wrong. And we, will, and we think to ourselves, why am I moving two steps forward and five steps back? Yeah. And this is because we, our pain body is constantly calling us back into wholeness again. And it will continue to do so. And once we heal the pain body, only then can we sustain the embodiment with our, higher, with our higher selves and sustain a higher frequency because that higher vibration is your natural state. You shouldn't have to do things to obtain a higher frequency because that is naturally who and what you are. We, all we need to do is um, move the aspects of ourselves out of the way that prohibits that um, that higher vibrational frequency. Um, and so there are five things I, I believe that are pivotal for people that are on the spiritual awakening journey. I speak from experience and I've no noticed it with lots of my clients in sessions and on their journeys as well. The first one is know that the law of attraction exists. Now we all know that the law of attraction exists, but are we actually using it as a tool in aiding in our healing, in, 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 in our expansion. I mean, um, you know that your, the law of attraction exists, but are you looking at your external reality and questioning um, what belief system am I holding on to that I'm seeing this lack in my life? Why do I have this job? Why am I attracting these coworkers and these authorities and bosses in my life? Why am I attracting men that are constantly abusing me and leaving me? Um, we need to use the law of attraction as a tool instead of just having it as a theory or as as knowledge but we need to really master the art of what we know and so that is the law of attraction and that and then everyone is your mirror if we can master the art of becoming aware that everyone is really just a gift in a messenger in showing us where we still are out of alignment then we become our own healers because then we, because once you bring the light of consciousness to your shadows, the shadow can, can no longer be a shadow. And so when we become aware of our misalignments of our blockages of our limiting beliefs by looking at our relationships, what is my partner mirroring to me now? What is that emotion that is bringing up to me when he says that? What is my boss? Why am I attracting this type of people in my life, in my working environment? Why, did my, why do I feel that way when my father says this? And so we use these tools as um, a tool of self-awareness, but then also using that awareness to begin to heal those aspects within us instead of referring, deferring people, uh, I could say deferring blame onto people. Once you once you move into a into a space of you are the creator, there is no there is no um, place for blame. There is no place for perpetrator and victim because you realize who you are. You can begin embodying the truth of who you are. And um, so I'm going completely off top, top topic here. <laughs> but like I said, it's the law of attraction. And then everyone is your mirror. The second thing that I, I think would really help people on this path is actively surrender. A lot of the time, we tend to hold so tightly and grip so tightly in, on what we think our lives should look like, on what we think our purpose looks like. And the minute we release that resistance and we just allow the divine flow to show us then your world expands beyond anything. I, when I did that, parts opened up for me that I, I never even could imagine. I never thought about. And you, it really shows you the possibilities and the potentialities for your life when you actively surrender. And I say actively surrender because 
surrender doesn't mean you giving up. It just means allowing that um, the divine within you to take control and then actively heeding the guidance and seeing the nudges and the hinges and the signs what about what your next step could be. Um, the third one is um, claiming, taking responsibility for your creations. Um, when I awakened and I knew who I was, I realized that I could no longer blame anyone for my life. That everything that I had experienced, I called to myself for the purpose of expansion. And I claimed everything. And that allowed me to take my power back. A lot of people are still living from a victim mentality, like things are happening to them. People are doing things to them instead of them creating their reality based on their belief system, on their vibration, on their emotions. And then um, the fifth one is um, claiming yourself as creator. This might sound very simple, but I, there was a spiritual teacher, um, Sai Baba, they interviewed, they interviewed him once and they asked him, um, so you say that you are God? And he said, yes, I am. But so are you. The only difference is, is that I am aware of it and you are not. Mm. And so claiming yourself as creator um, allows you to then begin to integrate the truth of who you are. You begin to embody that in thought, in word and in deed. And until such time that you claim yourself, if you do not do that, you will continuously limit yourself of the magnitude of who you are. You need to understand that you are greater than you could ever imagine. You are source in body, in form, in energy. That is who you are. You are made up of the exact energy that has created stars and universes and worlds. And so once we are able to master these few points on our journey, the, the possibilities are endless, we, but we need to commit to really going inward instead of looking for a solution outside of ourselves. And because when we shift the inner, the external will shift in accordance with the new vibration that you are at. I uh, agree with all, everything you're saying. Uh, and uh, sometimes you write that even in the book that sometimes even though we are on the spiritual path we can feel that we are stuck uh and i think you pointed it out that sometimes we may have one foot uh, inside and the other foot outside and uh, you're pointing uh to this again and again that it's important to commit actually to fully commit to it and I think also the, the process will uh, get faster than if you really commit to it uh, yes. instead of, uh, yeah, um, partially like committing to it. Um, I, you were saying in the book, uh, I thought that was interesting. The very thing you resist the most is that thing that is trying to draw you into the self. And I thought that was interesting because I think a lot of us uh, have resistance inside and it's such a weird feeling because it's not really tangible. It's like, no, I'm not sure. And we don't sometimes know, is this my intuition or is it just uh, that it's really, you know, it's not right for me or is it procrastination? Uh, is it that we are afraid of growing? So I'd love for you to speak a little bit about this resistance when that comes up and how that is the path to the self. Mm -hmm. For most of us, resistance uh, comes about because we, there is still fear. There is this fear within us. It's, it's, um, this fear is a, is, a, is a lingering thing within, within humanity with, on this planet. Um, for me personally, um, when I... You know, when I decided not to face the fear, but when I decided to go down that path and make that choice, because I knew I was fearful, I knew I um, didn't think I was worthy to go down there, I didn't know if I would be approved of, all those little things pops up. And I think this is a key, a key point to, to, to determine if it's your intuition or if it's fear or if it's, you know, someone saying go left rather than go right. Um, but usually the thing we resist the most that that ongoing um it's like we we I'm gonna say we resist it the most because we fear that we might not be good enough or we fear we might exceed 
sometimes we're fearful of the success and the magnitude of what we will create. And so when we, when we go through, when we face that fear or face that thing that you resist the most, that is usually where there is gold in heaven. That is where the gift lies. I remember that I, I feared um, speaking you know, to people. I feared speak, public speaking because I had this fear that um, I would not be approved of, that I wasn't good enough. Um, I didn't also feel that it was safe for me to be me. And so I didn't speak from a very young age. I didn't speak very much because of, I had that fear. But once I did it, once I did speak and once I decided to speak um, and I actually healed the aspect of me, me that was fearful, everything opened up for me because then I actually realized I was meant to speak. I became so confident that other doorways opened up for me that I could never imagine. I would have never thought I could speak in front of hundreds and thousands of people on a stage. And from someone that was so timid that couldn't even speak to, you know, the neighbor outside um, to speaking now, this is only because I, I faced that aspect of myself that was resisting and that comes from, usually comes from a belief structure or a limiting belief structure that, that most of us have. And um, when we really face that aspect of ourselves, that's constantly in resistance, that is where the gift lies. That is where you need to focus. If you, if you still have fear that's coming up for you and it's so debilitating that you're just not sure what this is, this is the moment to use it as a tool. Go within, ask questions, go see a spiritual teacher, a healer, take a course, start diving inwards because this is, this is where all the answers lie. If you dive inwards and you ask yourself these questions, you will determine whether it is um, a, a fear, if it's stemming from your childhood. When was the first time you experienced that feeling, that emotion? Um, then you start to become your own healer in a sense and you start taking small incremental steps of growth instead of staying stuck and stagnant but you are actually doing um, putting things into action that allows you to then remove those layers of resistance then if you not if you can't fully face that thing because of fear because of resistance find out what that resistance really is if it is your intuition if it is something that is saying go left go right um, but from my experience, most of the time, the resistance is just fear. And it's just a belief, um, a subconscious belief that, that we think something negative is going to happen or we won't be able to handle the outcome of the situation. But when you do face it, when you do go into it, doors open. It's like, it's magical. It's magical what could happen when you face that, when you face that resistance and see the pot of gold on the other side and you spoke a little bit about I, I thought that was interesting that in this uh, time that we're living right now we have a, a very big potential to to heal different timelines because I'm thinking when we speak about healing uh, we, we can speak about this life, you know, what happened in our childhood, but I think also it's connected to our previous lives, uh, the thing that we carry within to this life. So sometimes uh, there is a belief system there that is really coming from a past life, I believe, is, if it's really deep. Uh, and it's uh, probably in our ancestors uh, uh, or in our lin lineage, lin lineage? Uh, lineage. <laughs> in lineage as well so it's like deeply rooted in our families but you're saying we can heal that as well now because that then that's really good news because sometimes yes. these things are big big things to heal right yes so. um i'll come i'll come back to the point of in claiming the truth of who you are as creator as source when you do this yeah, you, you automatically raise to a higher vibration to, to align with that new truth of who you are as a powerful being. And in doing so, it gives you the ability to command miracles. Mm -hmm. you, it doesn't, you no longer have to take the long road in healing a belief system. You can literally, the higher, the higher your vibration raises, the more easy it is for you to just shift something. I can say, um, I command that this belief you know, releases on all timelines now, and it's done. That's because that's the magnitude of who you are. And 
at this time on our planet now, um, our timelines are basically merging during this, the, the, um, the advancement of, of, of this Earth's consciousness. And so our past lives are not really past lives. They are really just parallel lives because there is no past and future. So everything is happening simultaneously right now. I am a seraphim angel in uh, angelic realm as I'm sitting here with you. I am a star seed from Octorius, Octorus or Pleiades or um, in, you know, Atlantis, wherever I am, where my, wherever my consciousness is now, I am doing those things right now in this moment. And I am then able to access any of those consciousness. And I can literally release whatever belief, whatever block, from its root, even if it goes back millions of years, from the root throughout all timelines now and completely align myself to a new higher vibration. Um, you do not have to um, focus on just this lifetime. Um, and I will mention another thing is that a lot of us now, um, we, I, I, I believe we have four types of, of healers or healing. Um, the first one is we are, some of us are only here to heal our stuff, my personal stuff. The second one is we are here to heal for ourselves and for our family, for our lineage. And so it might be a bit more longer for, for, for you to then release a deep core wound or deep core belief. For others, they are here to, re to heal for themselves, their community, and maybe their country. And then the fourth one, uh, as a bit more responsibility, they're actually healing for humanity or even greater than that. And so you sometimes wonder, why is it easy for um, this person to heal so quickly and I'm struggling with the same wound, uh, same core thing that I've been dealing with for many, many years? That's the reason. It's because you came in there with a bit more responsibility of not only healing it for yourself, but healing it for multitudes of people, communities, your family. And so that can also be the reason why you're still struggling to heal a specific belief or wound or trauma um and thank you for that that made sense to me <laughs> that was okay. really helpful for me to know that wow wonderful yeah just uh something happened here yeah was there something else you wanted to now i was just about to say before this call started I had actually called in um, my team of guides. I called in the archangels, the sended masters, and the seraphim to basically create a container for us to be in so that if there are things that are ready to be released for you, for myself, or for the viewers, that it will be released during this call. Um, so whatever anyone might feel during this call, know that it's not your imagination. Just allow it, release it, and yeah. It's, it's just shifting. It's just moving. And it's just wonderful because I can feel, I can feel the vibrations as, as I'm sitting here. But thank you for mentioning that. <laughs> Beautiful. So uh, from what I understand, you were saying that um, uh, we have the capacity to heal different timelines and uh, our multi-dimensional lives. Uh, however, we, we need to go through that healing process first, right? To heal that pain body, to feel the feelings before we raise that vibration, right? So we, we cannot skip over some steps. It doesn't, it doesn't need to be a long extended situation. Okay. Deeply wounded things can be healed, but a lot of the deep entrained wounds calls that you, are, that you first um, learn the lesson, so to speak. So you need to get the lesson. So you need to ask yourself, what is the lesson that my soul wants me to learn now based on this wound, this pattern, the situation? If you can get the lesson, even just in your awareness and you can realize, you know what? I'm, I'm, I, I'm actually enough. I am enough. And you start to claim the truth that you are enough. You start to claim yourself as the source in form that will automatically raise your vibration. And a lot of those things will actually just fall off. It's usually the, just the deep um, wounded stuff, the core wounds that usually takes a bit longer, but it doesn't have to extend and delay over a long period of time. I am living proof. I can command miracles the more you begin to embody the truth of who you are. You cannot heal um, core wounds from the small self. You cannot heal at all from the aspect of the small self. 
you need to embody that higher aspect of you in order to shift those things, if that makes any sense. Yeah, because um, I have a membership and we've been speaking about how we can heal in different ways. And I've been reading uh, the Law of One material where they speak about uh, a feminine way of healing, which is through the feeling, the feeling and going back and it, really uh, acknowledging those feelings and the more masculine healing uh, where it's a shift of perception mm -hmm. uh, and shift of perspective. But in many ways, we need both um, at the same time. We cannot just shift the perspective when we cannot just feel the feeling because if you're just feeling the feelings and never shift the way you think or the way you look at things, uh, you can just repeat it. And if you never feel the feelings, but you just see that, oh, everything is an illusion, then you, you haven't really uh, resolved what was there. And I think that that's in a, in a way, the way you, you're saying it, just another way that uh, you realize that you were this, uh, uh, this creator, that you were so much more. And from there, you were healing. So it seems like this these processes happened at, at the same time. Do you understand what I'm trying to get yes. at? Yes, yeah. so it's, it, it, you are correct, Janneke, it is both. Okay. So, yeah. so a lot of the healing, um, the surface level stuff can be released just by the awareness of it because you're bringing the light of consciousness to that shadow or that belief. Um, a lot of the deeply uh, core wounds, that is a bit, that, uh, that, that you actually need to learn the lesson, as I said before. So that means that you actually uh, need to process that emotion, that feeling that was created right. at that time, and perhaps give that aspect of you what it needed or what it didn't get. So if it needed a hug, some love, you need to be present with that aspect of yourself. Um, and that, uh, that is usually the method for deeper core wounds. That is actually when you want to allow to heal across your ancestral timeline or your, for your family as well. Those are the deep, deep wounds that I would say has been passed down generation to generation. Um, and those are but harder to heal. But most of it, just by the, the awareness of it and the embodiment of yourself and the claiming of yourself as creator in form, already dissipates a lot of them because when you claim yourself as something that becomes your truth and everything that does not resonate with that truth automatically falls out of your your field very powerful i think people have you know uh, or i hope i just feel like uh, i've learned a lot today and I, I think people will get a lot of out of this interview i just have a feeling i'm very grateful for what you're sharing um, can you say anything about, uh, I mean, it seems like you are deeply connected with Ascended Masters and your own intuition. Can you say a little bit about, if you know, uh, or if you have some visions uh, for it, uh, how this new time is going to look like? Uh, you mentioned golden age. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's definitely happening. Um, I can foresee a lot of changes within the next five years or so, if you're speaking like um, within the, this world, as far as uh, finances, abundance, things shifting from, from the higher archy of organizations, from presidents and things like that, I can see a lot of massive changes with regards to equalizing um, finances to everyone within the planet happening over the next few years. But besides that, um, we are awakening at a rapid rate. And a lot of us are up now being called to be the leaders and the way showers to hold that light for everyone else to follow. I am here to give the message that I, as I am creator in form, so are you. I'm just an embodiment of what you already are. And so you just need to align your vibration to that truth. And so a lot more people will awaken. And um, what I can see is that timelines are busy being merged now into one timeline and so yeah what does that mean like that, yeah. that means that you you no longer um will have separate um streams of consciousness in other realities that you can actually access all aspects of yourself in the now yeah and so that is what i did when i um um 
access my consciousness as a seraphim angel. I could literally just access my soul, my soul star chakra above one of my chakras and access my higher self there, access the portal in connecting with the seraphim, my seraphim, seraphim consciousness and download that consciousness into my being now. Downloading your gifts and abilities into your being now. Downloading other lifetimes of mastery into your being now. I actually have a program that, that deals with the ascension blueprint. But this is all possible now when you open yourselves up to the truth of who you are and you start realizing how powerful we, we really are. You can literally speak, command miracles, literally. This is possible. This is, this people, other people or teachers are now embodiments of this. You are one of those, Yannicka. You just don't <laughs> know it to the full capacity. But you are one of those. There's one of those leaders and way showers for thousands of people. And your journey specifically is going to expand dramatically. Dramatically. I can't even say. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you're right that I don't know fully uh, my, my, I don't know, uh, my gift or abilities or... And a part of me is a bit afraid of knowing it because I was so... Uh, um, uh, taught to uh, dim my light down, not to take up too much space. So I, I've been afraid of that, that I'm too much. So I've been trying to like, uh, yeah, not just be too big in a sense. Uh, so that's there is some resistance there. Yeah. Yeah. I was just about to say that that's where your resistance comes in. And the minute you access that, the minute you access that, the world of, of, of everything will open up to you. You will see the fullness of who you truly are. You will see what I'm seeing now as I'm looking at you. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you for that. Is there anything else uh, you would like to share that you think is of importance in this time for people who might? I mean, I, I know that you're able to tune in. Uh, so perhaps you want to share something that people need to hear right now. Um, mainly just a call. This is just this, this, if you're called to watch this video, there is no accident. There is no you were divinely called to watch this video. Um, and for some of you, there has been mass massive shifts already within your consciousness as, as you are watching this. For others of you, you will awaken even more fully to the truth of who you are. But the message that we bring forth today, dear beloveds, is that you are loved. You are free. You've always been free. You've always been free. It is time to claim the truth of who you are as source embodied in form. That is who you are beyond anything you could ever imagine. And we call, we, we ask that you now go forth and be the light and be the truth and take the next step, smallest step within the next 24 to 48 hours. Ask yourself, what is the next smallest step that I can take within the next 24 to 48 hours that will allow me to expand even further. If you are wanting to get your work out into the world as a healer, as a light worker, what is the next smallest step you can take? For those of you that are not sure where you want to go, what is the next smallest step that can allow you to go inward within the next 24, 48 hours? Perhaps sign up for Yannicka's um, event, perhaps go see a show, perhaps go see a spiritual teacher or a healing session. Whatever is called to you is not called to you by accident. It's called to you by you. This video is called to you by you. And so we say, go for beloved. You are loved. You are loved beyond measure. Blessings. Beautiful. Thank you so, so much. Uh, and thank you so much for, for the beautiful work you're doing. And I can highly recommend for everybody watching to read um, Rihanna's book. It's profound, it's deep, and also to check out her YouTube channel and her work. And thank you so much for your beautiful work. Well, thank you so much, Yannick. It was such a pleasure to be and connect with you all today. And thank you so much for watching everybody. Much light from here. Bye-bye.